get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise All right, well let's rock this Cleveland Indians versus Chicago Cubs style right now All right Let's do it. Let's do it. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com. It's where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have top entrepreneur and business strategist, Vinny Fisher. Using his 10 plus years experience as a tax and business lawyer, he started his entrepreneurial journey in 2007 and since has grown businesses to seven, eight, and nine figures, generating over $300 million in gross revenue for his own companies. Just to give you an example, he started, this is amazing, we're going to dig deep in some of these. He started nine locations for adults with disabilities, an information publishing company, a web hosting company, brain hosts that grossed over $100 million, a website security company, Site Trust, which I didn't even know he started until I started digging into the research, a health supplement company, and is presently founder and CEO of Fully Accountable. They act as a CFO for your company. It's really cool. It's a done for you back office solution that allows you to make data driven decisions based on your numbers. He's also founder, if that wasn't enough, Vinny, founder of Total CEO, an education company that caters to CEOs to help grow and scale their company. And I have some notes in here for Vinny to talk about the terms growing and scaling. And he is the author of the CEO's mindset which I bought the other day and because I immediately wanted to download the audio version. Yes, CEO's Mindset, how to break through to the next level. And oh yeah, four kids, married for over 20 years. Vinny, thanks for joining me. Hey, Jeremy, thanks for having me. It's a crazy intro. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, I'm not convinced that entrepreneurship is for everybody. Yeah. I think it takes a certain... Uh, level of aptitude and ability to do and probably thick skin to to be okay with failure yeah right there are really good number twos threes fours and fives that probably need to be on other people's teams and yeah. not suddenly have a good night's sleep and say i can do this on my own and so but i i quickly on knew i was one of those guys mm-hmm. i mean i owned my own law firm i mean you know the joke always starts back to the family tells a story where you know basically my brother broke his arm and I took over the newspaper route and did it better than him and he never got it back and the newspaper company fired him and got me and so ever since then I've always been a guy I, I ran my own tax service during law school um, but while I was practicing law yeah. I um, always was helping run other people's businesses better than they could run them because I'd see things in it and I'd fix them. and So I was very much a hired gun, got paid a good amount of money. I probably dollar in, dollar out, never made any better money than when I was practicing big boy corporate law because I was running some pretty healthy companies. Um, I The story about the mental retardation business, somewhat irrelevant, but okay. um, I- I just I, thought it was a, like uh, such a- I fixed, I fixed a hole in the law and after I did that, the client I represented said, yeah, big shot, great, you fixed the hole in the law, but we still, I can't provide that service because there was a conflict of interest. I said, I'll do it. He said, you're just a dumb lawyer, so give me a shot. So he gave me a five-year contract and I grew a huge location with 500 employees and nine locations and I went hard and fast. And that was at the time I grew that when our publishing company did 110 million in revenue in 08. And so I will tell you, back to your earlier question we never got to the answer on, right. that the was balance. a time the balance when, yeah, yeah. I don't, see, I don't really believe in balance. I believe in priority and perspective. Right. Balance is a tough thing to achieve. I agree, yeah. Right? But I do believe in priority and perspective, and my priorities were out of whack, buddy. And so I was growing two major companies at the time. But, you know, I didn't have a jump, a magical moment. I've always been an entrepreneur type guy. Yeah. Um, I have this need to be in the front of the room, not because I'm the best looking. That makes sense to put the best looking guy in the front of the room, but it's not why. 
And it's not because uh, I speak the loudest. I probably do speak the loudest. And it's not because I always have an opinion, and I have an opinion about anything. And it's probably not because I'm the most passionate, but I, will, I can get passionate about a bowel movement. It's because, <laughs> literally, I, um, I want to lead. Yeah. Well, I'm willing to take the ball and run with it at all times. There are some major downsides to that. Um, but, you know, I have this urge to not give up when everyone else is willing to. Yeah. And so because of that, I don't fit within someone else's system yeah. very well. Yeah. Unless I'm, 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 I'm working towards the front of that system. And so if you've got that itch about you, you know, there's this funny thing. You know, entrepreneurs have a, a, a desire for a freedom lifestyle. And where that road meets freedom lifestyle, you know, to not have a bunch of stuff versus um, have a, you know, what I mean by a bunch of stuff, a like big infrastructure. The freedom lifestyle meets this kind of intersection in the road. Do I want to invest in my freedom lifestyle by investing in people so I don't have to get trapped in my job? And, and, and have a, a, an organization that's only going to be a certain size? Or when I hit that freedom lifestyle, do I want to invest in people so that it grows something bigger and it might look corporate and big? In either scenario, I'm untrapping myself from it, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I think there's a bad question out there about do I want to have a freedom business or a big business? I think both struggles are not having the entrepreneur trapped in its day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. One might be smaller in nature. And one might be bigger in nature. But I think it's the same struggle we have. Yeah. And, I don't, and I and I and so for me, I've always lived in that struggle. Like, all right, if I'm going to do this, like, it, I don't, it doesn't occur to me that I'm going to build someone else. So I woke up, Jeremy, and I realized I had the most fun helping people fix their problems. Mm. I had way more fun than all the gobs of money my wife and I made selling crap to people who didn't even know they wanted it. And uh, I'm good at it. And I'm not going to knock, but I, I'm having, I'm probably making more dollar on dollar less money right now. I might be building up more equitable value. My cash flow in, thankfully, I don't live the lifestyle that requires, you know, I can't help it, Frank Kern money to, to, to feed that machine. Frank, I had to do it for you, buddy. Sorry. But um, I, I, uh, I, I, I literally am in, impacting more lives and helping more people change. So the, the begging question is why service businesses over all these rock star service and product right. companies you built that didn't re require you? Well, I still do the same thing. I don't trap myself in these companies. Right. And so you made a comment about how I'm personally consulting 20 companies. Um, some of that's changed. At Total CEO, we continually provide productization and do one on many, but we're building up an army of coaches yeah. that do one on one. Yeah. Because no, I meant that in reference to your lawyer days when they had you on retainer. Oh um, yeah, I got yeah. paid a ton of money to answer questions for companies. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was the hired gun. Man, I matter of fact, people would still pay me for that right now. I have this wonderful knack of looking at your nightmare because I'm, you know, what's the hardest part of the tree to look at when you're in the forest? It's the top of it, right? Well, I've got this wonderful knack to look at your forest and look at the top of it way better than you stuck at the bottom of the base trying to discover it. Well, I think everybody could look. I just have a better ability to do that. And since I'm so quick to give an opinion, I have a fast one pretty fast, which probably is why I'm not the greatest coach in the world. I'm quick to solution and not so quick to you know, helping you walk through that journey, um, which I think there's some wonderful coaches out there, including our own. But I, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, Jeremy. I, uh, I live it. I love it. And that's why I'm kind of stuck on this journey in life, helping you and I and our friends yeah. think differently about really how to grow their businesses properly. Yeah. And so, we talked about earlier growth and scale, and hopefully we get there. So, Vinny, what did you want to be when you grew up, when you were young? You grew up in New York? Where did you grow up? I don't know if I've ever been asked that question. But you know what? I wanted to uh, play first base for the New York Yankees. You did. Yeah, and uh, and so I played baseball until I realized that, and I realized I wanted to go to college for baseball. I played soccer and made it that far in my career, so I was athletic enough to do something. Yeah, but apparently it wasn't to hit a curveball, and uh, so my dreams were dashed early, and 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 so I I didn't have the career set out to do that, and it was somewhere along that way that. You know, people used to always say, boy, you really don't like to give up on, you're competitive on things and you mm. like to negotiate your way. What you don't know about me is I'll negotiate your side of the argument even if you're incapable of doing it because mm. that's the whole fun and magistry of it. So I probably would have been a career negotiator, but I, I wanted to play professional sports. I think mm. I had a dream of a good, healthy subset of what a lot of young boys had. Um, 
I didn't have the dream to be a fireman or a cop or an actor. Uh, none of those things. I just wanted to play sports. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if I you developed. grew up in like an entrepreneurial household and that's where that stems from. No, or, I know. was the dad. I was the child of a professional manager of retail department stores. Hmm. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I love my dad to death, but probably his actions taught me to do the exact opposite hmm. of that. What and, do you mean? You know, I, well, he was kind of in the lower middle management of things and he lacked the ability to impact any change and kind of bought into the belief of some of those things. And that never resonated with me. Now, my mom was a little bit different than that. Um, um, so I probably got the shiny coin syndrome stuff from my mom because mm. she kind of would like would go chase all these different things. And she's very kind of center of the party type girl. And uh, so I got some of that from her. But there was I'm literally the first person that successfully graduated from college wow. with any secondary degrees. Uh, I think I was the only real successful business owner in our family. I broke a cycle of behavior in our home. I did it out of necessity, not out of uh, watching someone else do it. Matter of fact, it's actually one of the tragic things that happened. I learned later in life I was doing things to prove people wrong instead of having help learn from successful mentors along the way. So mm. one of the things I would have done differently was I would have quickly asked people who were successful in front of me how to do stuff instead of figuring it out all on my own. And I spent way too much effort breaking stuff and blowing a million here and a million there, figuring stuff out. And I would have easily kept a whole bunch more of it had I asked uh, thoroughbreds in front of me mm. doing it. Yeah, I would have, would have loved to have fixed that. And I hope that that inspires one other person to pick up the phone. And it, it, I, I think everyone should have a desire to stand up on stage someday and get a lifetime achievement award for something and have to point to the first row and thank every person in the first row mm. for their success. Right. That's a wonderful image everyone should have and not get up and hold up this trophy and go, I did it all on my own. Right. That's, a, that's a unicorn. Yeah. Last question, Vinny, this has been hugely valuable. I really appreciate your time. Oh, awesome. Yeah, anyone listening to any of this, um, I've gotten some huge golden gems that I have. Um, I have a page of notes here already. And um, awesome. I always ask, since Inspired Insider, two things. One, what's been the lowest moment point um, business-wise and how you push through? And then what's been the proudest moment for you? Um, hmm. I had two low moments. One of them I wrote about, and I'll just briefly tell that story. Yeah. I, um, um, I I remember sitting in the driveway at my house, and we literally, I literally once again, so because I'm a home run swinger, I'm either going to hit a wonderful home run or I'm going to hit double and triple plays. And I had just got done hitting a double play, bad, scraped our knee, um, lost us a lot of money. And... Um, I'm sitting in the driveway of my house. I'm about to go in and lead a church group about success and leadership and how awesome you are. And I've got $30,000 left in the bank. No, probably a little less. And I can't make payroll. Hmm. And well. I literally am praying to the Lord, saying, hey, Lord, what do you want me to do? You want me to just pack it up, go some other way, knock out the economies of the people we have? Or you know, what should I do? I get a phone call out of nowhere. Like divine intervention type stuff. It's my internal account. And she said, hey, were you expecting a check from this affiliate network? Uh, I'm like, no. She goes, it was like for $33,000. It's exactly what we need to make payroll. What Whoa. should I do? And right at that moment, this is my low moment. It wasn't the success part. I literally considered cashing that check and not making payroll. Mm. And I remember right at that moment being like, how low did I have to get to where I actually literally had a prayer answered for me and I was considering being a fool. And I remember going inside the house and admitting to everyone in my home mm. that literally I was at my lowest thinking about stealing the money that would have did exactly what we needed to do in our business. And the second one was when I landed from a vacation to see my face on the front of the news that we had just got sued by our attorney general for violation of a contract by the company that bought our business. Holy cow. And they, they named us in the lawsuit. And I thought, how fun is that when the general counsel and almost quasi elder of a church gets named in a lawsuit and I had to go deal with our elders and all that stuff. That was a pretty low moment for me. Usually, but it was a big yeah. character builder. The low moment wasn't the church. And the low moment wasn't the people in our church. The low moment there was skinning the knee in front of my cheerleader. It's the first time I'd ever really fail, failed in front of the bride. And so, but you mm. know, I look back, I look back at that and um, it was a wonderful part to our marriage. Yeah. So I don't look back at it. I tell that story proudly yeah. because 
it actually helped Deb and I um, work through the tough things in life, not continue yeah. to act like we've got this like rock star life where we don't have things. My best thing, Jeremy. Um, I want to stick on that for one second because what's yeah. really interesting about you and is the transparency, right? Mm -hmm. Most people, I don't know, I can't speak for most people, but a lot of people maybe would have thought that, put it aside and just done whatever. But you decided to go into that house and admit it to everyone. I had to. I so I, you know it's funny. My wife will joke. One of the quirky things you want to know about me is this: um, I um, I I have a my brain cannot get off something, and so if I go to bed thinking about something, I will literally live it out in my dreams. Mm. My little son Vinny, my little Vin, has the same issue. He'll get up, run around the house, and <laughs> he'll be, be all active in his thing. Well, I'm very much the same way. So, mm. like, if I tell myself like um, like I, that itches. And if my brain thinks about it itching, next thing you know, my whole body starts to itch. And I have this thing. So my brain will be consumed yeah, on it. Right. So if I don't go deal with it, I see. I'm going to deal with it anyway. Yeah. So, so if I your might way as well bring everyone into it. it. Yeah. I literally, so I'm thankful that, you know, because I was taught the opposite of that. I was taught shove it down. Mm. And it's what led to some physical unhealth. It's what led to, uh, you know, not trusting in people. It's what led to, uh, uh, probably even moments of uh, unclear or depressive type thinking. And so I would encourage everyone, get it the freak out. Right. What's someone going to do? Yeah. Tell you they don't like you because you tell, them, you tell people the truth that you suck or your feet stink like everyone else's when your socks are off and, and your shoes are no longer on? Who cares? Right? Right. I, I, quite honestly, if people on this show like me less because I told the truth about the things that suck, then they weren't someone I was going to impact anyway. Right, right. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the proudest, someone of the proudest, obviously outside of your kids and, and wife. Um, yeah, are we talking about in the work setting? Yeah, in the, yeah, business. or just in life, business. like what, business setting. Yeah. It, uh, it, it. Um, so I'm actually living some of my proudest moments, which is mm. really cool. So I believe in a farm system. I told you that earlier, right? Yeah. And so Rachel who I'm growing to be a world-class COO is one of my finest moments. And mm. uh, so watching her, she was being trained to be a lawyer and is a licensed lawyer. And I made her take the bar. Once she started excelling in our system, she's like, oh, I won't take the bar exam. I'll just be in business. I'm like, you're taking the bar exam. And uh, so I forced her to do it. But I'm watching before my eyes. We're going to talk about her 10 years from now being one of the uh, premier COOs. And uh, so she's a wonderful accomplishment. And I mm. love how what we've worked on is character building, not on all the structure and process yeah. of, of team. So she's a wonderful, uh, um, she's almost like a daughter to me. And she'll jokingly say, I'm old enough that she could be my daughter. But uh, that, that's, a, that's a wonderful moment yeah. is, the, is, is the accomplishment of the team we're constantly building around yeah. here. And she's right at the front of that. Yeah, that's great. So everyone should check out fullyaccountable.com. Yeah. The total CEO.com. And if you want those resources, I don't know if you want to talk about them or people can just go. You yeah, can go so to fullyaccountable.com backslash or forward slash inspired or the total CEO.com forward slash inspired. Yeah, it's forward slash, not backslash. Forward slash, forward slash, slash yeah. inspired at the total CEO.com as well as fullyaccountable.com, both of them forward slash. Uh, insider. And so what we did is we have a brand new book coming out for Fully Accountable called uh, False Profits, Why 99% of uh, Entrepreneurs Fail. Mm. We should have that book out soon. And, and, and since this is like the Library of Congress, your show will be up forever. We will put up the free link to that inside of Fully Accountable. But for now, you know, we, we are giving out a free copy of the, my latest and greatest soon to be bestseller. Amazing. Yeah. Um, Very we generous also might, of you. Thank you. Yeah, we also have a copy to my original book, which is a bestseller, called The Best Investment, A Better You. That's in there for you. We also have included links to your core metrics that we want everyone to use. So we have a bunch of resources and tools for that. We also have an example uh, core financials and management statements that we'd like to see you using in the way of, of uh, capturing the real numbers in your business. And we've also included um, some team uh, hiring uh, pieces that would be great for you and your team, and so we yeah. have a treasure trove of stuff there. And uh, we hope that you are your world, your people, your entrepreneurs find that helpful. Vinny, thank you again, and I really appreciate all your time. People, check it out and the CEO's mindset. I mean, you can go on there. I bought it. I bought the physical copy and also the audio version, um, just so I could listen to it. It's it's hugely valuable for anyone. So.
Cool. Thank you. Hey, but listen, by the way, I, not enough people hear this. I think your show is killer. Thank I would you. have said that at the beginning. I'm probably going to go out and shout it out on social media. You ask good questions. Your people should, if this is one of their first shows they're listening to, they should go and subscribe and listen to the other ones because you're like, not only are you living in that business who was the sponsor today for this, but your show is completely representative of you giving a crap. So appreciate it, bud. Thank you. Much appreciated, Vinny. You're appreciate awesome. It. See you, pal. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same.